Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. It's a beautiful day out today and it looks like it's going to be a gorgeous week. We might get snow one or two of the days and it is Thanksgiving week here in the US. So I actually posted on our main channel in the community section that we, we were skipping posting a video today and probably Thursday. We're just gonna take it a little bit easy this week, but we hope to have videos up all the other days of the week. Um, I'm not even sure when this one's gonna go out, so who knows? This week is just kinda like up in the air. Um, we're just gonna take a little bit of time just to whew, chill a little bit. But things are going well. I mean, you notice I am sitting down. For those of you who've been following our videos, you know that I've been having rib issues with this pregnancy. I've been going to a physical therapist. So I went to a chiropractor first and um, it wasn't super helpful, um, but I was really thankful for the honesty of my chiropractor and she sent me to a physical therapist and that's going super, super well. So things are, things are looking up. I'm, I'm excited to have this baby, but at least the pain has subsided a bit. So anyway, all that said, let's just jump into the videos from last week. The first one was planting amaryllis bulbs and forcing last year's amaryllis to bloom. So in that video, I had picked up six new Minerva amaryllis bulbs down at the garden center. I wanted to get those planted up in a container for our kitchen island. And that is where it's sitting now. And then I had this huge mass of amaryllis bulbs sitting in this room, actually the sun porch, all the way from last year. They'd been sitting there since after Christmas last year and I had forgot to pull them so that I could get them in their dormancy period anyway. So I kind of explained how to force amaryllis bulbs and we did the first steps and then I'll be bringing them out Boy, it'll be the end of December when we bring those out or beginning of January and we probably won't have blooms until mid to late February. Anyway, um, Shirley said, I planted bulbs about four weeks ago. The weather was starting to get cold. As I was walking about today, I noticed some beginning to sprout. Is that normal? I'm guessing you're talking about bulbs like outdoor bulbs, spring blooming bulbs like daffodils and tulips. It does happen occasionally. It happened to me last year. Uh, where I had tulip bulbs coming up when they should not have been coming up, but everything worked out pretty good. I think bulbs figure it out. They may, like I went and tossed some more mulch on the top of mine just to protect those tender tips, um, but you know, they may suffer a little bit of winter damage on the top of those green leaves if you don't have snow cover, but most of the time they will figure it out and they'll still bloom for you in the spring. Uh, Severin said, how fun to plant so many together. I cannot wait to see what that looks like when they're all blooming. I forgot about mine completely, same. Last week I noticed it and it had sent up shoots. I watered it and put it in its spot from last year. Do I need to give it bulb tone? You know, I honestly, if it's been in the same container since last year, I don't think it's a bad idea to give it a little bulb tone. In fact, maybe that's something I should do when I get mine out of dormancy. Maybe give them a little bit of a recharge because they're still in last year's soil. I didn't refresh anything there. Um, so yeah, I think it's never a bad idea in most cases to do a little bit of fertilizer. Of course, there are some plants out there that don't want fertilized to be fertilized ever, like sedums and Russian sage and stuff like that. Debbie said, have you ever tried these in water? I've gotten two and have started them in a vase with water and I'm getting some growth, so I'm hopeful. Yes, I have. There are specific bulb vases for both paper whites and amaryllis. They're kind of shaped like bigger at the bottom and then they neck down and then they have like this cup on the top where you can set the bulb in the cup on the top and so that the bulb is lifted up from the water reservoir down below and those roots will just grow right down into the water and they do fantastic that way. Now, I don't know if you're planning to save the bulb from year to year, if that would be a good idea to leave it in that vase. I think after, like if you wanna save it, after it's done blooming, I would probably go ahead and pull it out and pot it up in soil because I think that they may last longer and do better um, over a long stretch of time in soil as opposed to water but I've never put that to like a really long test, so who knows. Topeka said, beautiful arrangement. Is the forcing process the same for hyacinth bulbs? No, for hyacinth bulbs, you have to pre-chill those bulbs for, I think it's 10 to 12 weeks for hyacinths. If I'm wrong, we'll put that up on the screen, but um, typically you wanna put them in like a refrigerator in a bag uh, for 10 to 12 weeks, or like, uh, I think I've got, yeah, I do have some planted in containers outside that we planted this fall. So they'll go through kind of the normal dormancy period. They need that cold period in order to form a bud for next year. Um, so the, the forcing process, the chill time is much longer for hyacinths as opposed to amaryllis. And they're completely different. Like um, amaryllis cannot take the cold like outside, but hyacinths can. 
So if you have hyacinth bulbs in the fridge and you've tossed them in there for 10 to 12 weeks, then after that time you can pull them out, pot them, and then let them grow inside, even if you want to. I've done uh, videos on that before and with some really, really great results. Cheryl said, I treated my amaryllis as a house plant, but didn't water them. Before I put the bulbs in the fridge a couple weeks ago, I cut off the leaves and roots. Given my method, what do you think my chances are of getting flowers once I replant them in a few weeks? Um, you know, the only reason why I leave my leaves on is because the bulb soaks in more, you know, whatever energy is left in those leaves, it soaks it in. But so long as it's had, you know, sufficient water and sufficient sunlight throughout the season, you'll probably still get blooms. I mean, plants are pretty resilient that way, but it may take a little bit longer for them to bloom. Um, but it's definitely, I mean, it's a good experiment and you'll learn from it. Carrie said, random top dress question. I just did the same with the moss on my amaryllis and I love it. Are there pros and cons of using it on all my houseplants? It looks so clean and finished. I did a couple more, but it's an experiment. I've never had an issue using moss here. Ours, the stuff I'm using is preserved sheet moss. It's not living moss. It's not something you have to water. And I think that's the key. We live in a very dry climate, so it stays dry. It doesn't absorb moisture and stay wet all the time. Um, there may be some plants that don't like that. I typically like for succulents, uh, oftentimes I won't use moss, I'll use stones for those instead because I don't want any extra moisture at all. Although I think we're so dry, it wouldn't be a problem for us. Um, but I just want to err on the safety side and use stones for those. But I think most houseplants in general do pretty well with moss as a top dress. And I agree, I really like the look of it. However, there are times like with the lemon cypress in here when I was repotting them, the first one I repotted, I put a bunch of moss around the base and it looked horrible. <laughs> and it's just because of the type of plant. I think sometimes the contrast isn't there and it just looked like a big mass of like glob of green. It kind of looked like the plant was continuing down into the pot because there wasn't enough separation and I ended up pulling it out to put stones in. So sometimes just aesthetically, it looks better to use stones or pine cones, something more hard than it is to use something soft. Lisa said, did you plant last year's bulbs in the landscape and then put them in pots to bring inside or did you leave them in pots, take them outside and bring them back in? My intention was to plant them out in the landscape and this year was just like, just nuts. I wasn't feeling well, I was in the beginning stages of pregnancy when that should have happened and I just skipped it. I knew that they were in here and I knew that I wasn't gonna get it done and that's okay. You know, every year throws different things at you. Every season does and you just gotta roll with it. So they just lived out here. After they were done blooming last Christmas, I put them in the sun porch. I have a little heater down on the floor that kicks on when it gets like, I think I've got it set. I can't really tell from here, but it kicks on when it gets too cold in here and it just takes the edge off so it doesn't actually like freeze hard in this room. And they lived just happily in here. They get lots of sun. Uh, they got watered on a weekly basis. So they are still in the same pots that they were potted in last year. Diane said, I wish I would have seen this a week ago. First time planting one and I planted it deep in the pot. Should I repot? Dig out some of the soil. I, you know what? It wouldn't be a bad idea. The reason why you don't want soil up close to the top of the bulb is because it just eliminates the possibility of when you water, that water kind of subbing up a little too far and getting down into the neck of the bulb which can cause rot really quickly. Um, so, I mean, it's a pretty easy thing to do just to lift, you know, if you can like, scrape a little bit of the soil away from the top of the bulb and lift it up a bit and kind of tamp some of that soil down. And then you can use little stones around the outer part if you want to, to kind of help keep the bulb stable rather than soil. And last question from that video was from Raquel. I put mine in hibernation, but I think it didn't get cold enough to produce blooms. Could I put it back into hibernation for another six to eight weeks? You could, but if it's not gonna be any cooler, um, than it was before, then I don't think it's worth it. If, if your spot though is gonna get colder, um, then definitely it's worth a try. Uh, it was unseasonably warm during the time it was in hibernation and since pulling it out, I've only noticed the leaves starting to appear. Um, you might just leave it out and see what happens. Uh, sometimes like I had a couple of mine bloom right in the middle of summer this year out here in the sun porch. So you might be surprised. All right, next video was getting a start on our Christmas decorating. I decorated Benjamin's tree and our nutcracker tree and it was it was a lot of fun. That video took me like four days to film. I got started with Benjamin's tree and then I got like I got distracted and you know life happens and a couple days went by and I thought you know I should probably finish that project. Um, first question was from Jack. What is the house plant in the corner right of the tree around 1140? That was a Pegasus begonia. Uh, that has been in a container inside for two years. So it was last season, not this season, but the season, maybe the season even before that. 
I don't know, it is a awesome, it's an awesome plant. I love that, that uh, begonia so much. Robin said, why so many Christmas trees? Because it's fun. It's fun to get into that spirit of just like so much excitement and Benjamin is getting so excited about all the decorations. He tells people about it. Like, come see my Christmas tree and see my decorations. And he pulls everybody that comes to our house, he takes upstairs to his bedroom to show off his tree, which is so, <sighs> for me, I'm like, oh, it's such, a, it's just such a fun moment because I didn't know if it'd be worth it to put the effort into it this year. But I don't think that... I don't know, I don't know that the effort's ever lost when you do something like that. Cause even if Benjamin wasn't quite there, which he isn't quite there, I mean, he's pulling the strings off the ornaments um, this year. It's just fun to see just even the little spark that it gave him. And I don't know, it feeds me somehow to do that. But I don't know, I think it's kind of a thing for some of us, especially like our home, we've got a lots of little rooms. So it's fun to bring a little touch of Christmas in, in the way of a tree. And I don't have to mess around with messing with all my tabletops. Um, and things like that because I don't enjoy decorating tabletops like I do trees. I mean, I enjoy all of it, but not as much as trees. Trees are easy, they're fun. It's fun to do different themes because then you can get away from you know, like traditional. I have a big tree in our great room, which is we do very traditional. I decorated it, no tree topper, no ribbon. And I love it. So far, I'm really liking it. Just trying something new. Anyway, it's just fun. Farm Girl said, anyone taking bets on how long it takes Benjamin to pull the slide over and get the higher ornaments? When I read that comment, I was like, oh dang, <laughs> never really thought about that. We did have a very in-depth conversation about not pulling on the tree, like not pulling it down on top of him. He is really good. I mean, he's a pleaser by nature and he is really good. Like whenever we're dealing with any kind of, you know, whatever kid type of behavior that needs to be corrected, I usually just get down, you know, face level. I have him, like we make sure like eye contact and we just talk with him and he is so receptive to that. And I know not every kid is like that. And I'm sure baby girl, baby girl is gonna probably be super hard to parent Aaron. But Benjamin is really quite easy um, and I'm thankful for that. But yeah, I never thought about the slide. He hasn't done it yet though. <laughs> Janine said, beautiful and fun trees. Do you sort out all the many Christmas decorations and ornaments you've received from viewers and fans and incorporate some of them into each tree. I have not done that. I've actually kept all ornaments that have been sent to us in their own separate tubs because I have my own tree for all of that. In fact, I did a tree uh, last year that was just dedicated to that and I have moved that tree. It's up in our front parlor area. It's like right inside the window. I don't know if you can see the window right here, but there's a window in the sun porch that leads to like a front sitting area. And that's where that tree is going this year. I have not decorated it yet. I might have to get a bigger tree though. You guys are so generous with your Christmas ornaments to us. Christian said, how do you store your ornaments? Very poorly, actually. It's, it's lucky we've got a spot up in our barn. That's where all of our Christmas decorations go to put things because it's way out of the way and they're not handled. After I pack them, they're taken up there and stored on shelves and that is it until the next year. What I do is I know pretty much what's on every tree because I've just decorated it. And I know I can put the tree skirt at the bottom of the tub, which means like little padding. And then I put the heaviest, most un unbreakable, <laughs> least breakable ornaments at the bottom and then a layer of paper towels. And then the next layer of ornaments and then paper towels. <laughs> and I just keep doing that until the tub is full and I write on a piece of paper what's in that tub and slide it down in the front because I use clear tubs for everything. And that way I can easily see for the next year what made it into that tub. But I don't do proper ornament storage. That would take up way too much room. I look at those storage bins and yes, it would be nice to be that organized, but I have way too much stuff. I would need another barn to house those types of uh, organizers. That would feed your soul though, wouldn't it, Erin? To see ornaments like properly packed. Erin Aaron is an organizer like that. Like you like things to be in the proper container and the proper thing. Uh, Monica said, your skyrocket penicetum and hydrangea arrangement is gorgeous. Did you spray it with something to make it last longer? I did. Um, we did a video about that arrangement last fall. We'll link it down below. I used some sort of sealer I had on hand and I tried, I just watched back the video and I was trying to see what, what exactly it was called. I don't think it was for like fixing charcoal to paper, like charcoal drawings to paper. And so I just like said in the video, I have no idea if this is going to work. It clearly has. Um, but I gave it a shot. I've heard of people using hairspray or other types of like adhesive sprays, like a glue spray of some kind. Um, Russell, sometimes that's like the only thing in the house he will mess with occasionally. And I'll find little grass seed heads on the table that it's sitting on. 
but obviously not enough to make the arrangement look bad. I've been toying with the idea of changing that arrangement, Erin. It's been over a year. <laughs> I don't know. I love dried arrangements more and more in my life because I would love to have arrangements in every single room, but it is just not a reality for me to make uh, cut arrangements. I mean, even when I had a field full of flowers out there, cutting flowers and arranging them and then keeping up on keeping them topped up with water and pulling dead flowers out and wilted flowers out and like redoing them, it takes a lot of time. And while I enjoy that a ton, it's reality for me to have about one or two arrangements in my house that are fresh all the time. Um, but in every single room, like that's the dream, I would have to hire somebody to do that because I just don't have the time for it. So I love dried arrangements for that reason. Uh, Jennifer said, where did you find the tree for Benjamin's room? I got that at Home Depot. It was a six and a half foot. Um, I wonder if I can find it on their website because I don't think I actually said what the type was. It was $49.99. And it's a type of tree that you can t uh, change the lights from warm white to colorful, which he loves to do that. Oh, Erin, it's on sale. It's $10 off right now, $39.98 for a six and a half foot festive pine pre-lit artificial Christmas tree with 250 color changing LED lights and three different settings. So you can set it to warm white to colorful lights. And then there's a setting where you can have it flash from warm white and it fades out and then it goes colorful and then fades out. Um, so yeah, $39.98. That's awesome. We'll link it down below. And what was the other tree that I had? The micro dot tree that was asked, asked as well. Let's see. Okay, well the closest one I can see to what I have in our great room and the Nutcracker tree is the Home Accents Holiday, seven and a half foot Jackson Noble Fir LED pre-lit artificial Christmas tree with 1200 color changing micro dot lights. And there's also a nine foot version. I think that's probably it. The word Jackson does, does, is not ringing a bell, but the Noble Fir part is. And there is the seven and a half foot and the nine foot size on there. Um, I was a little bit nervous buying those trees because I don't know and I haven't looked. There probably are places you can buy the micro dot lights if some of them go out. Um, but I was so like enamored with the way that tree looked in the store and in our homes, especially at night. I mean, it's the most glorious artificial tree in terms of lighting that I've ever seen. Um, and so I kind of at that point just didn't even care. I'm like, I love this tree. <laughs> I need to have these trees in my house. Um, so anyway. Yeah, and Miranda said, this one is my favorite. Hmm, I wonder where he gets that from. He has lots of favorites, just like his mom. It is so much fun to go Christmas lighting right now. A lot of people in our town have put up their Christmas lights already. And like my mom and sister, my sister's in town for Thanksgiving and my mom and sister came and picked us up last night and we went and got ice cream. And um, Benjamin was just a total joy <laughs> in the back seat, every house. Look at those lights are my favorite. Look at the blue lights are my favorite. <laughs> I do say that a lot too. But it's just so, it's just so sweet. Love it. Uh, Margo said, I may have missed this. Why don't you use real trees? I feel like if anyone can keep a Christmas tree alive, it would be you. You know what? I used to always use real trees. I grew up with real trees. And I would like, to be honest, I would slightly judge people who used artificial anything in their homes. And I know that's wrong. And I don't do that now because, I mean, the reality of life and also cost, like cost over time when you get an artificial tree, it's crazy the difference and then the care factor. That is what sold me the first, like first to move to an artificial tree because I think I was the first one in our family to do it. Because my parents still do a real tree. Uh, my sister and brother now do have artificial trees. Your mom has a fake one. But now. not in, like until years after we did it. Yeah. She's got a couple of, well now. Just last like two oh, years, yeah. right? Yeah, she's, she has an artificial one now. Um, and they sell, you know, down at my parents' garden center, they sell real Christmas trees, fresh cut and living ones. Um, Anyway, I just, I got sick of watering it. I mean, I would have these water hungry trees that I'd have to come home on my lunch hour to make sure that there was water in that, the bowl. And I'd water a morning, noon and night and I was just so sick of doing that. Um, and I just wanted less maintenance and less cleanup because they're such a mess when you take them out of your house. Um, anyway, I am gonna do one living tree or fresh cut tree rather on our front stem porch or in here somewhere. I did one last year and I really enjoyed it. We are going to move on to the next video, which was transferring perennials and shrubs from containers into the landscape. And we did a little porch cleanup. So that was in our patio kind of by the Versailles garden. I just had some remnants of fall decor right there um, that I wanted to get cleaned up and ready for when my greens arrived so I could 
deck it out for Christmas, which they have arrived. I haven't started the decorating up there yet. Um, but I had a lot of plants in containers that I wanted to plant in the landscape. And I often say, you know, it's, it's such a fun thing to use those types of plants in containers because then you get double duty out of them, use them in the container, then you get to use them in your landscape and you've stretched your budget a little bit by doing that. Um, but I rarely show the follow-up when I take them out of the containers to plant them. So I just wanted to show you the process and kind of talk through some tips in that arena. So I also had some like between three different containers, I had enough plants to just kind of cobble together the containers that flanked the doorway and I've really been enjoying them. Julie said, do you ever cut back your blue fescue? If so, when? Uh, we did cut it back this last year. We did it in the spring. It looks pretty through the winter months if it's, you know, not covered by snow. Um, and it really did freshen it. Before that, I'd kind of left it alone and it was getting a little bit mangy. So cutting it back once a year so it can flush back really fresh and that really bright icy blue is a good idea. Uh, Lauren said, what do you do with all the plants you're throwing in the pop-up bin? Those have been going to a big massive pile that we have sitting out in our new property, which is pretty much the only thing that's sitting out there right now, other than my little crop of parsley. Did you notice that out there? No. We left the parsley. So it's like a barren landscape and then there's this little poof of green right in the middle because the parsley is still like rocking out there. And then this huge pile. So Aaron is putting in a composting system in the back corner of that new property. It's not in yet. And so we hope to, it's gonna kind of be his pet project, I think. Um, you excited about it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, we don't have anywhere to put it right now. We're gonna actually burn that big pile, um, but it has been too wet to do so. So we haven't done that yet, but that's where that stuff has been going. Um, Margie said, will you replace the window boxes with completely new ones or just paint the ones you have? Um, I thought you were happy with the performance of the window boxes and previously talked about painting them black. I had talked about painting them black. I'm pretty happy with the performance of the plants in those beds. <laughs> you have the hiccups? <coughs> you have the hiccups? Did I say beds? I meant window boxes. Anyway, um, now that I think we're going to take them all off the house, I think I'm going to get new ones that have a little bit more decorative um, aesthetic to them. The ones I have right now are pretty plain. And if I'm only buying three as opposed to buying nine, then I can buy ones that are already black and then I don't have to have the maintenance of like scraping, you know, scraping them and refinishing them and touching them up with paint and all of that business. That's just one extra layer. Um, and that way I can just, I can either say, I'm not sure if we're gonna save the window boxes for a little while, probably, um, until we decide if we want to maybe put them back on or use them somewhere else. Um, we typically hold on to things like that for one or two seasons and then we let them go to friends or family um, if we haven't used them in a while. Kathy said, loved the reuse. Where did the grasses go? Those grasses are annuals, so they went out to the pile. They do not winter over for us. And I have tried to winter them in the greenhouse. I've tried to winter them inside and I've never had any good success with it. Uh, Lisa said, off topic, but did I miss the video on the telephone pole removal? You have not missed it. The date got pushed out to December the 4th. I think, se oh, 7th. Dang, I've been telling everybody the 4th. I've been so excited. Now I have to wait three extra days. Yeah. <laughs> um, so December the 7th is when that's gonna happen. We are gonna film it. Now the little fence that we had all the hay racks on, that is now gone. My cousin came and they, they took all of it. The whole fence, all the vertical posts, even though they were in concrete, we popped them all up with the tractor. He had some buddies with him and they hauled it all off to their house and they're gonna be using that fence. I love it when we, Aaron typically posts a picture on Facebook and says like, hey, we don't want this fence, we want it gone. Who wants to come get it? And somebody usually wants it. And that way I feel like all this stuff is not being wasted and it's being re reused and enjoyed somewhere else. So it is looking a little bit weird and a little bit like barren up there, especially now that the cut flower is gone, the fence is gone. <sighs> now we just need those poles to be gone. Daniel said, where did you get those concrete feet for the bottoms of the containers flaking the door? Those came from Unique Stone and I think they're called Gothic Pot Risers and I love, love them. I think they're so beautiful. Abby said, how do the baskets drain if you use plastic inside? Is there a hole in the plastic in the basket? How does the basket stay nice if there's water around? So I had those containers, those baskets with the black plastic inside and they were planted up with the dogwood and the kale and the mom. Um, those are just black plastic pots, like nursery pots. So there are drain holes in the bottom and typically I put them inside a saucer inside the basket um, so that the basket is still fairly dry it will get like it's inevitable there will be some water that hits the bottom of the basket or the side of the basket or whatever but it's usually not enough to damage it and i can usually carry my baskets over from year to year for several years in fact those two baskets are now in the root cellar so if you watched our root cellar video where we filled that up 
we put acorn squash and Yokohama squash in two baskets, those two baskets on top of one of the shelving units. So that's where we're using them now. Alan said, what's the story with the arb in that beautiful square terracotta planter by the coop? It looks like it needs a hole in the ground and the container needs something colorful. It's also not square to the coop and that would stress me uh, out, but no, it's not a trigger. <laughs> I like to do things like that just to see if I can mess with people a little bit. Like having your hair down? Oh yeah. Yeah, my hair down triggers a lot of people. I got a message about that this last week. Yeah. <laughs> So people who are super concerned with what I do with my hair. It's just, it's funny. Um, anyway, yes, that arb pot is interesting because there's a big root from the elm tree that kind of runs in that area. So it's really hard for us to get it level and get it positioned right. And that container came from our townhouse. When we moved to this house, it came here. It had already lived in there for about three or four seasons. And it's been in there for four and a half years. Yeah, since we moved in. So it's been in that pot for eight and a half years. That's it, crazy. Yeah, it could probably benefit from being transplanted out. It is, this is the first year it, it's looking kind of like, yeah, like it needs to go and I need to put something else there. I think part of what hurt it this year was the elm tree falling down. It had been used to like dappled sunlight. Um, it didn't get the intense heat, which arborvitas here tend to do okay with that. And then when the elm came down and that was like midsummer, was that midsummer? It feels like it was midsummer. Anyway, when is it came this down- year? Was it this year? I don't even know. Well, whenever that happened, um, all of a sudden it was exposed to like a whole lot more of the elements and that kind of can shock a plant a little bit. Crystal said, does Aaron ever tell you no? I feel like all that the time. Could, I feel like that could uh, open up a huge can of worms. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're referencing like me asking him to help me with projects outside in the garden, which most of the time, especially like in cases where I need holes dug and I'm, you know, seven plus months pregnant, you're super helpful to me. Um, or if you're meaning like... You but I do tell you that I'm interested in things. Like yeah. if you're wanting to do a project, sometimes I'll just tell you like, that's not, that's not my thing. Yeah, really like, hey Aaron, I want to order 10,000 bulbs this yeah. year. I know that I'm not going to bring him along excited to help me with that. And so like he always tells me, which is so nice. He's like, you know what? If you want to do that, just make the world what you want it to be. So if you want to plant 10,000 bulbs, know that I don't really want to plant 10,000 bulbs. So if you can gather up some help to help you do that, then awesome, do it. So I know that not every project I'm going to have his actual like physical help with, but I always have your support. And that kind of comes along with like, does he tell me no, like in terms of projects, we don't really tell each other no for stuff. We always, we always have conversations about things. And we usually come to a, a common agreement. And oftentimes like it's good to have that because there's sometimes that I wanna do something and then after we like reason it out and talk through and there's lots of things that I don't think about and implications, then I'm always kind of thankful, most of the time <laughs> thankful. Um, like, oh, okay, I'm glad we didn't jump, jump into that thing or whatever it was that I wanted because it would have you know, caused ripple effects or whatever. I don't know, we're pretty well balanced that way. That happens on my end too. I I'm pretty impulsive when it comes to buying things. And you oftentimes will have me stop and like think about it. And wait think wait about, a couple yeah, days. Think about how important it is. And mm -hmm. then after a little while, you kind of start to realize that it's not, probably not as important as you thought it was. Yeah. And maybe but you I think, don't need that thing. I think it goes your way too. Like, um, you know, while you may not be interested in planting 10,000 bulbs with me, I'm not super interested in learning about what iMac you want. Yeah. And I'm just like, ugh, just make sure you think about it and then just buy what you want. Like, make the world what you want it, Aaron. <laughs> I don't really want to be involved in that decision. Um, so anyway, I, I mean, we disagree like any other couple does out there. I mean, you guys don't get to see a lot of that because, you know, who wants to see that? But I feel like we got pretty lucky. Like we have pretty similar situation, uh, uh, similar outlooks or similar yeah, uh, similar goals world views world similar views. world views yeah we were raised very similar similarly which is helpful question about your troughs on the new property do you totally empty them or do you leave the remaining soil in them and just refresh it next year now if i had those troughs in a spot i wanted to keep them i would not clean them completely out i would just fill them up and then probably scrape off the top foot of soil and refresh with new and just leave the old stuff in the bottom unless i was dealing with some kind of horrible disease or insect issue this year we put that bark, like those bark nuggets in the bottom and it was a horrible thing to do. Uh, I was doing that just as an experiment and to cut down on the amount of uh, potting soil we were using, but it messed with the drainage big time. We had to water them a heck of a lot and the water just like shot right through the soil and went out that, the bark and it just pooled. And they were connected to the tomatoes and the pumpkins, which we had to water all the time. And so we ended up cutting water to those and just hand watering them. So this year we completely dumped them out. 
they're actually just scattered out on the new property and we're just gonna till in all the bark nuggets and all the soil and everything. Um, and next year it's go going to be 100% soil. I'm not gonna use fillers anymore. Willie said, cute picture at 607 with Russell admiring the wreaths. Question, um, I may be incorrect to assume you are combining all the plants temporarily until Christmas green greens come within the next 10 days. Does it bother the plants to be moved and replanted frequently? I don't think at this stage it really bothers them. I mean, I planted them in the fall where they're kind of starting to power down. They're not putting on a ton of growth. They put on a little bit of root growth like the dogwoods did, um, but they're so not in their active growing season that moving them from one container container to another at this point of the year doesn't hurt them really at all. Okay, so the next video was filling up our root cellar. First off, I would like to say that at some point in that video, it looks like I shut a cat in the cellar and I did not. In fact, if you watch like just a few seconds later, you see him appear behind me. Um, so I was very diligent about making sure a cat was not in the cellar, but that was a huge concern. Um, and I can totally see because there was one time where we shut Dexter in the potting shed. Remember that, Erin? Overnight. Yeah and we found him there. I know it can happen super quick, so a lot of you guys have suggested like a motion sensor or a camera in there, and I think it's something we will do, um, given the fact that we will now have two kids running around and the cats and everything. I don't want anybody to get stuck in there. Carrie said, what happened to your wooden shelves from gardeners? Totally forgot about it. <laughs> forgot about the harvest rack. Oh yeah. Yeah, I totally forgot about it. Do you, you have it in the other bay? I do. Yeah. Which I've got bulbs on it. I've got some elf, no, not elephant ears. I've got um, caladium bulbs sitting on it. And uh, you know, honestly this year, I don't know that it would have benefited me hugely because my, my crops, I mean, the bulk of what I stored in there are things like dahlias, which needed to be in the vermiculite. And then all of my squash and pumpkins, which many of them were too big to fit in that harvest rack. But I could have probably done onions and garlic in there just forgot. <laughs> but that's the beauty of not putting built-in shelves in there because now I can really um, use the space. I can figure out like, oh, it would have been better to have that harvest rack in here um, or whatnot, you know. Uh, Keneva said, you guys are so inspiring to watch. Have y'all decided on your new baby's name yet? No, we have not. I thought we had it kind of picked out and now I'm like, I don't know. I thought having a girl, it would be a lot easier to pick out a girl name because it like, you know, growing up, you always have names that you really love, but really love any of those names anymore. And they have been used quite a lot too. And I don't know. Uh, Cheryl said, what are you going to do with all those pumpkins? I know you can't eat them all. Give them to friends? Yes. In fact, I put out a little thing to my family and just said, if you guys need pumpkins or squash, you come to my house um, and we will find homes for, you know, food bank, um, whoever wants to take some of those. Um, but we have eaten, three in the last week, last less than a week. So we'll, we're gonna power through as many as we can. Sandy said the root cellar turned out really nice and the studio is starting to take shape. Just curious, why would you want a heater in the root cellar? The only reason I wanna do that is my parents for their root cellar, which we mirrored ours, ours after theirs that they had built into the back of one of their barns. And um, that's one of the things they did not have put in there. So they have to run an incandescent light bulb um, which emits just enough heat to take off the edge in there so that things don't freeze because you know just three it was at three winters ago now we got down to negative 17 and when you have a room that doesn't have any so i mean it's insulated really really well but still when you're dealing you're combating with negative 17 degree heat temperature is cold <laughs> then you want a like a slight sort of source of heat to take the edge off in there because that extreme cold can really uh, make that temperature in that room go down so we just want to have everything in place like in the eventuality or in the case that something like that happens that we're prepared. Michelle said, how long will all the pumpkins and squash last in the root cellar? Typically they'll last anywhere from like, I think standard is like five to six months, but some of those like the sweet meats, the Jardels, I don't know if that's how you say it, but those really thick rind type squash, those will last sometimes up to a year if they're stored in the right conditions. Is there any reason behind why some crops are stored in a basket and other are just on shelves. No, it's just purely like, how do we get these all to fit in here properly to where there's enough airflow around most everything so that it's not like nothing's too tight in there. Uh, DH said, do you, you have fruit trees on your property? We have, well, I have one pear tree planted behind the greenhouse. I bought six fruit trees last spring thinking we were gonna be ready to plant our little orchard and we never got to it. So I still have them in their containers. They're back behind our greenhouse now. Um, would you plant ones that would thrive in your climate so you have fruit for the root cellar as well? Yes, that is my hope. I think we're gonna go with 10 fruit trees back behind our cut flower garden. 
Um, and like I said, I have six of them already. I've got two apricots, two peaches, two pears, a plum. Oh, I have seven. I have seven fruit trees. Um, and I don't, I don't have any apples yet. I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually grow apples because they tend to, or cherries, they tend to be the hardest to keep bugs out of. And we have a lot of orchards around our area and you can get those things fairly inexpensively. Rebecca said, what happened to the sunflower seeds? So those stayed in those trays and they dried out. And now I have four big gallon Ziploc bags. They're two gallon bags, I think. They're big bags um, full of sunflower seeds. And those I have moved up to the root cellar. And then I did harvest a bunch more heads of sunflowers um, after we did that video. And they're sitting in a wheelbarrow in the barn right now. And I thought for, uh, with those, I'm just gonna leave them in their heads and I'm just gonna set them out for the birds as the weather gets worse. Margie said, why did you decide on an above ground root cellar instead of a below ground root cellar? Um, we decided on that just because it, we had a perfect spot for it. It was like this little a cubby that we weren't using for anything. It tends to be, it's easier to get in and out of because we're not doing stairs or anything like that. Um, it's very clean, it's very tidy. Um, and I, I don't know, I think the ease of access and just the ease of the whole thing makes it nice right there. Million Eyes said, what happened to the root cellar that was already on your property when you first moved in? Yeah, we did have a root cellar that was off of our potting shed. It's where the chicken run is now. And it was, it was, sketch. it was sketch at like at best. It was creepy. There were these really skinny, um, steep stairs that led down to it. And then this little creaky wood door that had a lock on the outside. And then it was like a domed, kind of concrete domed top thing. But there were big cracks in the ceiling where water was starting to seep in. It was a dirt floor. It smelled musty. There is no way I would ever store food down in that root cellar. I think it would have taken so much repair work to get it usable to where I felt like it was safe um, that it wasn't worth it. And so we thought, no, this is perfect for the chicken coop. We'll have that collapsed in. We had Chad who does all of our excavating work. He came and punched the thing down, removed all the concrete and brought fill dirt in. And then we had the chicken run built right over the top of it. I think that's a much better use of the space for us anyway, just based on how like the repair it was in. Maeve said, I would love a detailed video of the root cellar. What insulation rating, humidity, temperature, how do you control increase the humidity with an AC if needed? Since it's in your garage, is the fan your air circulation? I've been trying to find info to install one in my basement underneath the stairs. Um, P.S. I love those baskets. Yes, a lot of you guys love those baskets and the, like the potatoes and the onions and garlic were in those kind of, they're like thin wood baskets. They came from my parents' garden center. Everything else in your question, I'm gonna have to kind of report back to you because I am just learning uh, right now. In fact, I'm gonna have Eddie uh, who built the root cellar come over and instruct me on the vent fan and how to properly set the humidity. I think I'm getting it figured out, um, but I want the humidity, humidity level to be somewhere between 60 and 70 and that I manually control in there. And then we have a cool bot, which you can control from your phone with the, I, I don't know. I don't know how it all works together. You have to keep some wires exposed to the air in there um, so that it can in, uh, gauge where the temperature's at and all of that business. So um, I am hoping over the next, like this whole winter season, it'll be really telling to, based on how my stuff does and how I've been going out there every day and looking at all of the, all of the little panels in there to see where all the, the uh, levels are at. Seems to be holding pretty well. Um, but yeah, I wish I had more information, but I really want to give you an educated answer on that because right now it's kind of just guesswork on my part. And the last video from this week was wreath making basics. So I actually got all of my greens in. So I got beautiful princess pine and noble fir boughs, variegated holly and incense cedar. And I really wanted to make a wreath for our new neighbors. They, they moved in like end of October, but I haven't had a chance to take them anything yet. They built the house right behind our vegetable garden. I've known them for a lot of years, which is really fun, but I wanted to take them a wreath. Um, and I thought, oh, this would be a really good opportunity to go through the basics with you guys. Um, again, we've done videos before in the past, but it's fun to do a revisit every once in a while. Virginia said, so beautiful, but I wish you had showed us the best way to attach a wire to hang the wreath, if that is what you would use. Or do you use a string or pipe cleaner? I don't attach anything to hang the wreath. Typically, I'm just using a wreath uh, hanger, like a door. Is that what you call them? A wreath hook? Wreath hanger. They hook over the top of the door and then just hook around your wreath somewhere. And usually I can find a spot where it'll kind of slide in underneath some greens. And if it's too, it looks too exposed, sometimes I'll just like hand hot glue a couple of pieces around the vicinity of the wreath hanger so you don't see it anymore. And Sarah said, how often do you spray the wilt stop? Just one time. 
And uh, there was a question about residue around where you spray it. It does leave a residue, it's easy to clean up, um, but it is kind of like a, it makes the wreath shiny um, and the, the surface gets kind of a, like a little bit sticky. Um, so keep that in mind, like I would spray it not on your door. I would hold it up somewhere outside, spray it, and then put it up on your door after it has a chance to dry just a tiny bit. Maria said, "What uh, would wilt stop hurt succulents? I have a mix of succulents and greens in my wreath. I would not spray any wreath that has succulents in it with wilt stop. Most succulents don't want to be sprayed with anything anyway. I would just avoid it because it's like a, it's a thick resin that would go over the leaves of your succulents and I do not think they would like that. I am the whimsy said, do you ever take old wreaths apart and use the forms again? Yes, I do. It's really easy because you just flip the wreath upside down, use wire cutters and just cut all the wire and then everything comes right off and you can just store the wreath hanger for next year. Tracy said, if I'm gonna add pine cones or berries to the wreath after it's completed, should I wire them or hot glue the additional decorations to the fresh branch branches? You could do either one. Here are the pros and cons. Pros of wiring them in is that they will be secure like for good. <laughs> They're, they, I mean, you can put them exactly where you want them to be. You can put them the tightness you want them to be. It is a little bit harder. So the cons are, it's, you know, you have to weave that wire back to the back of the wreath and then getting it positioned just right and tied off right. A little bit more uh, squirrely. But when you use hot glue, uh, pros, it's a lot easier because you can put it right where you want it today. But sometimes the weather, when it gets really cold and stuff can like uh, make the, the glue, um, What's the word, like constrict, is that right? Like it can make them pop off. I mean, it's possible. It happens with our walnut reeds on occasion. Um, some our walnut, like all of a sudden will just fall to the ground because the glue isn't holding it on because it got way too cold. Um, so that's one of the cons. I still use hot glue and don't have huge issues, but if I'm using something heavier or hot gluing something heavier in, I would maybe consider wire. That would be a little bit, um, I'd have more confidence in that. And the last question for today's video, Ethan Beat said, are you not planting bulbs this year? Yes, we are planting bulbs. So we've done a few videos. We did one where we planted 750 daffodils in our east side containers. We then planted, was it like 11 or 1200 daffodils in the raised brick circle bed, right? Four or a thousand. It was like 1100 or 1200. And then we also planted a thousand tulips in my parents' planters along their driveway. And then I planted, close to a thousand tulips in two of our raised beds in the vegetable garden. These are all in different videos. So it probably feels weird because we usually do one big bulb planting video where we do all of it in one day. There's just no way I could physically do that this year. Um, and we have a ton more <laughs> to plant. In fact, I'm getting help. I've got a guy out helping me today. He's out there planting some of my daffodils because it's getting really hard to do the up and down thing. And um, there are some daffodils I want to go plant both at Aaron's parents' house and at my parents' house. So you'll probably see that come up, but um, I think it's gonna be a gorgeous year because it was a very different order. I, you know, I order all my bulbs from color blends and um, usually I air really heavy on tulips. And this year I only ordered like two different varieties and the rest are all daffodils um, because I always regret not planting more daffs because those are earlier and they're so bright and cheerful. So I think it's gonna be a really pretty thing. Um, but we are kind of up against the wire and that's why I got help because I thought, well, I can, I can plug away and do a little bit at a time, but here we are, like we're gonna go back down into the teens here pretty quick um, in the evenings and then the ground will start to freeze and it'll get harder, so. Oh, and we also planted a ton in containers. We planted a lot of bulbs this year. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, that's it for today's recap video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys all have a really good Thanksgiving week. Um, yeah, it should be a really nice kind of relaxing week, I think, for us. So I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.